I think we can all agree that art is a potent medium. But is it powerful enough to bridge differences and heal wounds? In recent weeks, I have been in conversation or listened in on conversations with artists and creatives who use their gifts to help a wounded world. The possibilities are bracing. Good evening. I'm John Neri, and you are in the public square. Dakila is a non-government organization that works with artists and activists on human rights and democracy issues. Because it's made up of artists and because it works with artists, it naturally harnesses the power of the arts. At the 2022 General Assembly of the Council of Asian Liberals and Democrats held in Iloilo, I heard Dakila's Floyd Scott Tioganko speak on what art can do to actually change human behavior. Tonight, Floyd joins us together with his chief, Dakila Executive Director Lenny Velasco, to discuss how art can help rebuild a sense of common purpose and unity among Filipinos. Welcome, Lenny and Floyd, and thank you for joining us in the public square. Hello, everyone. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, Lenny, let's start. Uh, what, what is it that Dakila does? Let's uh, set the context first. So Dakila is actually a collective of artists, and we want to build a movement of heroism towards social transformation. Actually, when we started, our peg was like a Pinoy Justice League, Sir John, so that we can inspire, as artists, we can inspire people uh, to take part in nation building. So basically, that's what Dakila wants, to inspire greatness, nobility among our people. How interesting, a Pinoy Justice League. Uh, Floyd, I heard you. I heard you in Iloilo, in Iloilo, and and you said among other things that art is about narrative making. Can you yes. explain that a bit? Yes. Um, yung art ay isa sa mga bagay na pwede nating gamitin para mag uh, push through ng ating advocacy. It's a narrative making because um, ang mga kwento, ang mga ang sining ay Kung paulit-ulit natin siyang ginagawa, it, it becomes a narrative. Pag paulit-ulit siyang kinikwento, pag paulit-ulit natin siyang naririnig, nagiging narrative siya. Kaya may mga kwento na minsan di ba parang, ah, narinig ko na yan. Pero it is a narrative. At yung narrative na yun, pwedeng good narrative at pwedeng bad narrative. Kung bad narrative siya, pwede natin siyang i-counter through counter narrative naman. Ipapakita natin why this narrative um, is harmful to everyone else, everyone's lives, livelihoods, and lifestyles. So, mas ganun po yung, ano, yung pagtingin sa art na isa siyang narrative making. Meron tayong binubuong mga kwento. Uh, Lenny, yung ginagawa ng Dakila, no? you have several initiatives uh, ongoing. Uh, are they also different expressions or forms of narrative making? Yes, definitely. Um, especially at these times na yung current context natin is really um, reinforced by the dominant narratives. I mean, we've seen in the past six years how the war narrative on the drug war, even in the pandemic, ginagamit yung war narrative in terms of curtailing our rights and freedom. So malaki sa ginagawa po ng Dakila is to explore also narrative change making towards the values that we want to promote as advocates of human rights and democracy. If I understand you correctly, pag sinabi mo na, you know, this uh, policy is a war on drugs, uh, there are many uh, things that can be excused because it's, quote-unquote, a war. You know, the killings, the uh, violation of civil liberties, and, and so on and so forth. So, yung selling the entire drug policy as a war was already in itself uh, a narrative making. It's actually a playbook built on narratives, kung mapapansin natin, di ba? Parang mm -hmm. it's re really being used, yung narratives, even this information um, is a narrative in itself na finifeed sa atin to, as part of this whole playbook. Floyd, can I ask you... Uh, 
how, how do we apply this uh, idea of using art to bridge differences? You know? For yeah. instance, you have someone who actually bought into the drug war narrative in the last six years no? and ended up uh, voting for candidates uh, last May because of that narrative, yeah. right? So yeah. how does Dakila come in and uh, create the possibility of uh, uh, you know rebuilding a common purpose? Yes. The thing with um, narrative change making, the navigation ng possibilities then sa mga tao na posible pala na um, gawin natin ng isang bagay ng hindi marahas at hindi hindi bloody katulad ng um, regime ni Duterte and malaking bagay ang sining dahil it, yun yung mga yung sining yung mga kwento natin ang mga pwede natin gamitin like for example kung ikaw ay isang filmmaker meron kang pelikula at meron kang um, meron kang gustong sabihin at manonood ang mga tao isang ma- isang malaking bagay yon para makipag-usap sa ating audience with performances with theater ganun din is ano siya communal experience siya na kahit sino pwedeng pumunta at pumasok at makipag-usap isa siyang malaking trabaho din sa lahat hindi lang ng artist kasi minsan parang pag artist uh, nag-aano ka nag na may may ginagawa ka pero at the end of the day meron ding trabaho ang educators meron ding trabaho mm-hmm. ang organize ang organizers para pagbuklo rin ang mga tao for a certain cause na pwedeng mag jump ang jump off point ay art or or films or music pwede natin pag-usapan yan mamaya balikan natin no like how how can a teacher use uh, resources of art to for instance foster critical thinking ano pwede nating balikan yan but i i want to ask first uh, Lenny no and Floyd yung sa dakila mismo uh, what are you doing now no it's been what uh, six months <laughs> Uh, since the election, uh, in a way, there has been a sea change no? in in in, uh, in uh, the national situation. Um, meron kayo mga programs like uh, radical empathy at saka disruptive kindness. No, actually, I'm borrowing uh, that title no? for the title of this episode: uh, uh, disruptive kindness. What what is it that you seek to do, no? Uh, given the new situation now, ano tungo mga programa nito? Siguro yung isang um, halaga talaga or yung naging impact ng election or the past six years sa atin, malaganap talaga yung social polarization or yung widening social mm-hmm. divide at mm-hmm. grabe yung inabot din ng disinformation to really divide us. So isang ginagawa talaga namin through arts is really encouraged na despite of all the dehumanization, ang tawag nga namin doon, very dehumanized na tayo after the pandemic, after the drug war, parang wala na, manhid na tayo sa isa't isa. Grabe yung polarization ng lipunan natin. And nakikita po namin yung art as a way to actually humanize us again. Parang bumalik tayo sa pagiging tao natin. And that's how we explore art through the different approaches. Kaya malaki sa amin ang radical empathy because at the end of the day, we may have a differ- differences, pero pare-pareho tayong tao, pare-pareho tayo ng lived experiences natin, and that's what we use to again foster yung connection natin sa isa't isa and to address this widening social divide and we use disruptive kindness para maibalik natin yung pagiging human uli natin. Um, I'm reminded of something that Floyd said in that Iloilo speech of his. Ano? Uh, Floyd, tama ba? is there a real distinction between breaking through, uh, uh, let's say, a particular audience and reaching out to that audience? No? Kung meron, pwede natin pag-usapan yan. Sige po, yes. Uh, yung breaking through, yun yung, yung meron kang binabanggan, no? meron kang pupuntahan. Yung reaching out ay, nag-iiba sila, sa in, nag-iiba sila ng intention. Ang reaching out ay pag pag uh, gusto mo reach out meron kang intention to bring people together yung break parang hindi kaya sa, sa amin sa dakila hindi lang dapat 
na iiwan sa breaking through. Pwede tayong gumawa ng maraming art ng 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 films mm-hmm. na nag na binabasag ang conventions, binabasag ang ang status quo. Mm-hmm. Pero baka naman hindi siya nakaka-reach out. Baka naman hagang breaking through siya tapos yung mga tao na iiwan lagi. That's why meron ding uh, initiative ang dakila on our end ng pag-bridge din nung nung ano dahil hindi naman natin hindi naman natin i-dismiss yung sining, 'di ba? Hindi naman natin i-dismiss kung ang pelikula ang gustong sabihin ng ng isang pelikula ay uh, mag-breakthrough siya. Pero doon doon papasok ang ating education program, doon papasok ang ating organizing program na mag-reach out tayo sa mga tao. Um, we will reach um, the widest possible audience para hindi rin naiiwan yung audience at tayo tayo lang ulit yung nakagets mm-hmm. ng mga bagay. Siguro so, the so, better so, alternative word nga po is tagos eh. That's what yeah. we really aim to do eh. Tumagos mm-hmm. tayo dun sa real live experiences ng mga kapwa natin tao. Kasi mm-hmm. um, madaling magsalita at magsabi ng ito yung yung tamang values, etc. Pero paano makatagos? That's the challenge for us communicators talaga eh. Can we have an example? Uh, pwedeng hypothetical, ano? Halimbawa, meron, meron kang kilala. Let's say, pinsan mo na bought into the drug war narrative the last six years. Alright? Uh, what, what, what can be done? Uh, what kind of art, for instance, can be used to bridge or initially bridge the differences? Uh, can we put that in action? Floyd, you want to respond? Sige. Sige. When it comes to drug war, ang dami na nating nakita, di ba, na, na works na um, nagkatakil nung, nung drug war. Pero personally, ang 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 kailangan siguro ay kung paano natin i-humanize din yung, yung buong issue dahil nga ang tingin sa drug dependence ay kriminal, hindi na sila tao. So the way in which we frame and craft our works or the words na sinasabi natin is kailangan bumalik na maramdaman ng audience natin na tao yung yung pinag-uusapan natin at hindi siya konsepto na ah itong drug war ay ano siya um kailangan na kailangan to para madisiplina ang mga tao pero babalik mm-hmm. sa tao yung tao yung yung babalikan natin para tumagos doon sa audience natin na ano mo siya, kapatid mo siya, pwede mo siyang kapatid, pwede mo siyang kuya, pwede mo siyang tatay. Ilala, i, gagawin natin tao yung, yung works. Nung, nung kasagsagan ng, ano, kasagsagan ng, ng drug war, uh, may isa akong ginawang performance na, um, yun talaga nilapit ko siya sa tao. <laughs> nilapit ko siya sa tao yung performance. During that time, dahil galit ako, Um, nagilamos ako ng dugo ng baboy sa eskolta, along eskolta. At after that, may mga bata, may mga bata sa ano sa kalsada. Tapos kinakausap nila ako, sir, ganyan. Totoong dugo po ba 'yon? Tapos you have to you have to have a conversation with them. Dahil hindi for me hindi natatapos yung yung work na nagawa mo na siya. Parang ano siya eh, pag if you if if it's out there Um, pwede na siyang i-own ng mga tao at dapat kaya siyang i-own ng mga tao na ah, meron akong, meron akong stake, meron akong makukuha from that. And then after that conversation, um, sila mismo ay nagsabi na so dito nga eh, merong ano, merong kami na babalitaan. And then the conversation mm-hmm. keeps going, hindi siya stagnant at least para lang meron tayong may isa tayong ano, isa tayong Uh, conversation na pinupuntahan. Actually, yung magandang kwento dyan is Aswang, eh, as a documentary film. Mm-hmm. Nagamit talaga namin ang art, ang film in particular, to open conversations. Lalo na na ang drug war kasi very sensitive topic. Eh. But mm-hmm. with that film, it was able to really open up conversations sa mga bagay na mahirap pag-usapan, especially at the community level. Um, nakakatulong yung film um, para ibalik na wait pare-pareho tayong tao eh kapit ba- parang kapit bahay ko lang yan eh yung subject na yan sa doctrine na yan eh so that's the power of film of power of art yes. actually na ibabalik niya tayo na 
na y- yung human emotions natin, yung humanity natin, na check natin, na tao pa rin pala tayo. You know, this uh, conversation reminds me of the Osbich uh, Memorial account on Twitter. Uh, meron na rin sila sa Mastodon, ano? Uh, napaisip talaga ako sa approach nila because, you know, instead of showing, uh, just showing the uh, concentration camp Uh, images, no? yung mga naka-stripe pajama suits no? ng mga concentration camp inmates and I, I don't know, I think one and a half million people died in Auschwitz. No? Ang ginagawa nila as much as possible, pinapakita nila yung uh, pre-concentration camp pictures ng mga victims. No? So pinapakita na, you know, here was this successful businessman, there was the, her, uh, there was this four-year-old girl, no? Na, this is her last known picture, no? dinala siya dun sa train, papunta sa... Yun yung, yung, pag, yung pag-humanize. Kasi, um, sabi nga ni Susan Sontag, nakaka, nakaka-dull din, ano? Uh, first, the uh, images shock you. Uh, ganun din sa drug war images. Ano? And then after a while, they dull you know, they deaden your senses. Parang, ano na lang. So, ang gusto-gusto ko yung ginagawa ng Oswitz, that, I, I, I'm, that's what I'm hearing uh, from you, no? When you say na kailangan i-humanize, no? Talagang maging tagos sa kanila. Ang next question ko is, yung, the art that you do, for instance, for instance, the film, yung Aswang, or yung performance mo dun sa Escolta, is that art for breaking through? Or is that art for reaching out? Or is there no real difference? Pwede ba ako sumagot? Kasi bata pa po ako nun eh. <laughs> 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 po ako nun. So parang nung time na yun, breaking through. Pero mm-hmm. tapos parang ang, ang, ang idea ko pa of reaching out was, alam mo yun, sa isang public space na everyone can just come and go. Yeah. Welcome yeah. lahat. Pero habang tumatanda pala tayo as as artist or as makers, nagbabago din yung ating sensibilities, nagbabago din yung ating processes na baka pwede pang may gawin doon, yung navigation natin through our making, meron ding pwede pang puntahan. Yun yung I think sa malaki ding um, power ng art na um, it has it's, it has this endless possibilities of of going through something at reaching out. So ayun yeah. po, personally, siguro breaking through lang yun muna during that time. <laughs> I, I think process naman siya. Ang malahalaga kasi, ang ginagawa talaga namin, we really guide the public to their own yeah. audience journey. Eh. So hindi siya nag-stop at one point. It's really a process. Actually, medyo advanced kasi social behavioral change talaga yung gusto mo nating habulin yeah. with our audiences. So there mm-hmm. are steps, there are ladders of engagement at kung saan level yung audience natin unti-unti natin dinadala or hinahanti sila dun sa level ng engagement na yon hanggang mabuo talaga yung social consciousness nila. Yes. Uh, Lenny, can I ask you to uh, respond to something that uh, I uh, heard from Floyd in his speech in Iloilo. Ano? Kasi napaisip talaga ako dun. Ang ganda nung session nila on art and what art can do. No? Yung One of his early slides, sabi ni Floyd, uh, art can change the world. You know? Wala masyadong effect sa akin kasi parang narinig ko na yan. You know? Pero meron siya isang later slide na sinabi niya, art can actually change social behavior. Doon ako napaisip. I mean, it's the same thing. It's you know, changing the world. But this time, it's a little more specific. You know? Changing the world, yeah. especially when we consider as uh, 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 our uh, uh, founder... Uh, Maria Ressa, uh, uh, you know, uh, points out uh, social media is a uh, behavior modification technology. Yes. Uh, yes. How does art change social behavior? It actually changes the way we view the world. So that's the beginning of your engagement into changing the world. Ang powerful ng art eh, to change how we think, the way we see things, And that's the start of the social behavioral change. If we're, if art is able to open discourse, new ideas, imagination, then it not just the audiences to slowly or in process change how they view the world. And changing the way how you view the world towards helping contribute 
to changing society. I think that's where art goes. That's where art helps a lot. Um, nung nag-umpisa naman tayo, hindi naman tayo social co- socially conscious na kagad eh. Ako, I started, I read Decada Setenta in high school, I, I listened to Noel Cabangon, or I watched this film on Schindler's List or anything. And that started my uh, my mind to think about other ideas, concepts that I haven't known before. And that's where it starts. It really opens the imagination. It opens um, conversation so that you get to know how or, or understand how our world works. Yes. What, what do you say to people who uh, understand or feel the power of art, you know? But their understanding of art is, well, you know, it's art for art's sake. No? Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, the, you know the, the, the cinematography was like this, or, you know, the melody, the melodic line, you know, is so powerful. I mean, my appreciation is art, you know? Uh, you know, and of course, that's, a, that's one of the two major schools of art appreciation. No? Uh, how do you bring them to the other school? <laughs> Art, in fact, has a social purpose. As an artist, Floyd? But I love my last, my, my talk nung nakaraan din ang dakila with me sa isang organization sa, sa isang student org sa UP. At ang topic ay films and human rights. Tapos, paano nga ba natin ipapakita na may human rights sa bawat pelikula kahit gaano pa siya it, ka, it, kahit gaano pa ito ka romcom or kahit gaano pa ito ka ka comedy or horror or or mm-hmm. avant garde art house may human rights doon eh the way we see uh, do, nag, nagkakatalo tayo the way we see eh. parang kung ang, ang ang filmmaker ay malinaw sa kanya ang intention niya ay gumawa ng isang romcom film pwede ang ang pwedeng ang intervention natin ay nasa audience, paano manood ng isang pelikula? Parang kung doon sa pelikulang yon may nakita tayong, ah, medyo, ano yon may may rights violations doon, kahit, let's say, ano, naghiwalay lang sila, at hindi, mm-hmm. at, ano, binabombard pa rin siya nung ex niya, ganyan. May, may violation doon. So the way we see, the way we watch films, pwedeng doon yung intervention. Kasi the artist parang for me parang ang hirap din na i-require natin ang ang artist because that can be limiting that can be self censorship mm-hmm. pag sinabi natin na o oh, ito lang ang gawin mong art ha ano lang human rights themed dapat din maging open tayo na na ang ang art ay may sarili siyang may sarili siyang um espasyo at may sarili siyang bosses na kung pwede doon sa sa audience doon sa manonood at makikita at magtitingin ay nandoon yung intervention na nasa audience na kung pwedeng nakalo last year ay last year ba yun yung sa Art Basel sa, sa Miami di ba may ano lang yung saging lang na <laughs> yung saging lang na nilagyan ng duct tape tapos mm-hmm. ano art siya pero pwede nating tingnan yun as food security Pwede natin tignan yun as, as, as envy, kung paano natin siya titignan. Yun yung pwedeng intervention na hindi naiiwan ng ating audience. I think, um, ano yan eh, um, everything can actually be presented in the lens of human rights or politics. Nasa mm-hmm. ways of seeing po talaga. Um, we've never had a problem programming experimental films, rom-coms, and present it with the lens of human rights. At yes. the, kasi at the end of the day, It's really talking about art actually talks about the realities of human conditions and that's political in itself the realities yes. we have Sorry to ask the obvious uh, rebuttal no um, someone who uh, might think differently will say so how how can we bridge our differences if you're coming to us with art that's pushing human rights no and thinking nga namin Uh, hindi importante yung human rights. Ano ba? Ganong, ganong klaseng. Uh, so you come in, uh, you, have, you have a very strong view of art. Uh, uh, how is it possible to uh, bridge differences? Uh, 
despite very strong uh, points of view. I think that's where how approaches works. That's why we're very, very conscious sa Dakila that hindi kami um, coming, out, uh, coming off as something vague, top level. Lagi talaga namin dinidikit sa real lived experience ng mga tao. And that's mm-hmm. what's helpful with art and films actually. Kasi mas nag-resonate sa kanila na nire-relate namin yung art dun sa kwento ng buhay nila. Kasi everything are stories actually. Even visual arts, music, those are stories presented in creative forms. Yes. Uh, Lenny, uh, we were in conversation uh, a couple of days ago and I told you that uh, uh, my previous episode, I, I had this Indonesian researcher based in Vietnam uh, working for an Australian university uh, who suggests three ways to depolarize a society. And one of them was to reinf- reinvigorate uh, what he called third places, no? uh, or others would call it third spaces. No? So not the home, not a place of work, but coffee shops, uh, you know, barber shops, those were examples, you know, uh, public parks, and so on and so forth. And then you, you said something that, oh, you know, uh, I, I know I know what that means, and we, we have something like that. Can you talk to us about your huntahan? Yes, actually, it's very innately, ano, di ba, sa culture ng Pinoy na nag-gather tayo oh, sa mga huntahan, like sari-sari store, sa kanto. Mm-hmm. Um, remember, pilosopong Tasho, di ba, kung saan siya nakikipagkwentuhan sa mga kapehan. So that's innately in our Filipino culture. And we in Dakila also wants to maximize that. We actually utilize gatherings such as that in informal ways kasi mas hindi ka guarded pag hindi na sa structure ng formal structures and institutions. Kaya kaya usually kami pag nag-orientation, nag, mm-hmm. nag-discussion sa mga bars over inuman. Kasi yes. mas ano yun eh, mas, mas komportable yung mga tao. Mm-hmm. In vino verita, sabi nga nila, uh, <laughs> pag nagkikintuhan kayo over beer or... Uh, yes. Actually, uh, the best ideas come no, from mga ano eh, inuman sessions yeah. eh. How do you handle... Pag minsan, things can get out of hand na din, ano? So even in those huntahans, meron ding tataasan ng bosses and so on. How do you handle that? For us, that's actually good that people are able to discourse Um, mm-hmm. Of course, respect should be there. But in Dakila, we really value actually yung dynamism ng membership. We belong to different fields. Eh? And I think it's a very good practice that even you see things differently and you argue with each other. The point is their shared values, their shared goals, and you respect each other. And the best ideas, I think, have come from those differences. Mas yes. nakikristalize yung ideas if you're coming from different POVs, you're from different perspectives. Mas na doon na fuel yung dynamic, dynamism eh, actually ng isang grupo. What, what, what do you mean by disruptive kindness? Ah, that's one of our approach in addressing the culture of violence and intolerance, especially in social media. So, mm-hmm. Wala talaga mangyayari kung if you would fight fire with fire, di ba? Lala, lalaki lang ang apoy. So disruptive kindness is something, though it's the hardest to practice, mm-hmm. it's, a, it's an approach that we really use to actually, um, alam mo yung pag may kalaban ka, madidisarm mo siya through that kind of approach and disruptive yes. kindness. For example, concretely sa social media, sa mga mm-hmm. comment section, instead okay. of really... Um, fueling the init ng, ano, ng conversation, you come from a place of understanding, of empathy, na yes, tama ka naman, I agree with you. Mas ganon yung kindness, or kaya you affirm the things that um, na sinasabi niya, but at the same time, you also um, put another idea or put another thought. Um, usually kasi ang sanay tayo sa comment section, awa yan eh. But if you yes. come from a place of kindness, That's disruptive kindness. You actually disarm your opponent by practicing um, disruptive kindness and empathy. At nagagawa yun sa mga comment sections actually, mas nakikinig sila. Kasi ina-expect nila, awayin mo sila eh. 
But yes. they'd be surprised that if you agree with them, mas makikinig sila. How do you learn that? Uh, it's so hard to practice this stuff. Practice yes. But well, socially, I think we've learned that through the community pantry. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's the best yeah. example of disruptive kindness. The community pantry experience, yes. 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 Uh, Floyd, yes. you're about to say something? Yes. Sa, sa dakila, meron nung Pride uh, Month, meron kaming comms materials, uh, it's a campaign, na binago namin yung ano binago namin yung tono pag uh, pinag-uusapan ng LGBT doon sa comic strips namin ano siya eh, parang may isang ex, may isang eksena doon na umuwi binapauwi na siya nung nanay niya kasi birthday niya tapos nasa Pride March siya tapos na umuwi siya sinurprise siya na may right may may rainbow flag tapos welcome home yun yung yung yung, yung kindness na yun na didisrupt din yung ano mo yun nga yung kalaban o yung opponent na Ah, mahal pala ako ni Mama. <laughs> Ganyan. Umuwi siya ng... She is accepted. So, may pagbabago talaga doon sa paano natin kakausapin yung kausap. Babalikan ko yung uh, yung difference uh, between uh, art uh, that breaks through at uh, art that reaches out. Kasi uh, napaisip din ako doon, uh, Floyd. Eh, no? uh, I- I'm still... Uh, you know of that old school na you need you, you need art as a way to you know break walls uh, so you're breaking through but then after that maybe you sit down and you know have a drink parang ganyan ano parang ganun yung process pero parang there's a possibility na may art then na i mean after you break through there's also a, a, a kind of art uh, or many kinds of art uh, that you can use precisely for reaching out purposes Maganda siguro pag, pag-isipan din. Parang what, what, what is the future of uh, art that does that? No? Another thing I want to go back to, uh, yung how can we help uh, teachers, uh, parish priests? Uh, I'm, I'm also in conversation with uh, some congregations. No? Ganun din yung mga tanong. How do we, how do we break out of these uh, uh, echo chambers, these silos, and so on? Uh, what can we tell them? What what can they do with art? Uh, so maybe Lenny first and then try. Madame, actually we're we're working with some universities right now and we're doing mm-hmm. um training with tools on how to utilize arts, media, and popular culture um to spark dialogue, especially sa mga baguets na, na nanghina after the election. Um mm-hmm. art can be a space for them to actually wield their imagination again. At sobrang importante yan sa panahong to mm-hmm. that we feel mm-hmm. desperate to be able to wield our imagination and hope that things will get better even with this situation. That's how art actually helps us envision that new order or the world after a pandemic. So importante na ginagamit natin yung art para hindi lang to to reflect what we feel right now, but actually to imagine a better world. Yes. Thank you. And Floyd? Yun, same naman po na may, may program, pero pwede rin siyang ano eh, dahil, ngang, dahil ang pagkatuto ay hindi rin naman na uh, tatapos sa, sa, ano, sa classroom. Pwede, pwede yan nga sa, sa simbahan, dahil ang, ang mga Pinoy ay communal then in nature. So, lalabas tayo doon din sa confines ng ng ating ng ating home pwede tayong makipag-usap somewhere um yung, yung mga pag-uusap na yon it's ano siya it's it's a way to to reach out doon sa sa mga kailangan natin ding kausapin otherwise um tay doon tayo sa silo doon or doon tayo sa echo chamber so kailang ano siya um conscious effort din siya everyone not just the artists not just the educators not just the priests na wag magsara ng pinto wag magsara ng pinto kung magsara ng pinto magbukas ng bintana <laughs> para makapasok ang mga tao makapasok ang hangin makapasok ang ang bagong ideas at perspective at 
sa pag-uusap, sa pagkwentuhan, doon nabuboil o nabubuo yung, yung mga mga ideas na kung pagkasama-samahin natin. Kasi ang dami naman ding ideas. At mm-hmm. hindi tayo, tayo mga Pinoy, hindi tayo na uubusan ng ideas. Lagi tayo may mga ideas sa mga bagay. And then, we utilize that through art, through film, through through music. At yun yung isang way para um, makausap natin yung mga mga kailangan natin kausapin at gusto natin kausapin. Thank you. Um, maybe one last question uh, for Lenny. I, I want to go back to what you said. You're working with some universities and so on. Um, what do you offer these schools? Now, do, you, uh, do you put together modules? Uh, do you leave behind art material that they can use and reuse? Do you, uh, I don't know, teach uh, teachers, <laughs> I don't know, dance steps or something? I mean, uh, w- what what can uh, universities who look forward to working with you uh, expect from Dakila? Mostly what we do is help in the pedagogy. We use a lot of creative materials, films, then we complement it with toolkits that they, the teachers and the students can use. It's basically alternative education. Um, mm-hmm. The possibilities of using other forms, platforms, or expressions um, to complement classroom teaching. Uh, Doon helpful po talaga yung art. Especially in the classroom setup, uh, what we think is that we need to encourage our students to ask questions and the difficult questions. Kasi that's the only way how we can teach critical thinking talaga. And that's the tools really needed for us to be able to form a critical citizenry, which we need in our everyday democratic governance. Uh, thank you. I'm, I'm reminded, uh, uh, you know, it's time to uh, end our program, but I'm reminded of something uh, uh, Professor uh, Isabel uh, uh, Martin uh, said uh, uh, at the same conference uh, that, in fact, what's needed is both critical thinking and creativity. Uh, and I think this is uh, really a concrete example. Um, to Lenny Velasco and Floyd Scott Yoganko of Dakila, thank you very much for an illuminating uh, discussion. Your work is a defense of the public square. Again, many thanks. Thank you. Salamat, salamat po. That's it for us tonight. The next step for engaged citizens is always to take a more active part in rebuilding our democracy. See you in the public square. This is John Neri. Thank you and good night.